Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Hogwarts. I really didn't want to be the Dark Lord. Chapter 41 But Uncle Vernon stopped suddenly. Because the boy in front of him was pointing at himself with a long, thin wooden stick. Ha ha ha, you are holding a small wooden stick, are you trying to pick my teeth? Uncle Fernan laughed. But Aunt Petunia's face changed drastically, no, Fennan. Come back quickly, he's the same as those people. What? Uncle Fernan heard this, and quickly raised his rifle again to point at the boy in front of him. Shaji glanced at the gun in his hand coldly, then waved the wand in his hand lightly. Uncle Vernon found that the rifle in his hand turned into a greasy snake. Ah, what's going on? Terrified, Uncle Vernon quickly put the snake aside. Then he backed away with a pale face, standing in front of Aunt Petunia. You better shut up, or I'll turn you all into mice. The Dursleys huddled in a corner of the room, their calves trembling with fright, not daring to speak. Shaji looked back at Harry Potter who was already staring blankly. Mr. Potter, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Although Harry was also a little scared, the boy looked about his age and seemed very kind. The fear in his heart soon gradually disappeared. Shaji turned her head to look at the broken gate, and then muttered to herself. Ah, the ancient lock picking spell, open sesame, is still too violent, and Allahu is gentler. He waved his wand, back to the original. Then he turned and looked at Harry again. But Harry's gaze was attracted by the door behind him, because at this moment, the door that had been broken into pieces flew back to its original position piece by piece, and slowly repaired into pieces like a videotape played backwards. The way it started. Shaji stretched out his hand, Hello, Harry Potter, my name is Shaji. Harry stretched out his hand in a daze and shook Shaji. Hum, excuse me, why do you know me? In the wizarding world, even a toddler knows your name. Magic world. Harry looked at Shaji suspiciously. Shaji shook his head helplessly. Well, the Dursleys really didn't tell him anything about the wizarding world. He looked at the Dursleys. So you never told him about the wizarding world, did you? Stop. Shut up. I won't allow you to say it. Uncle Fernan's face turned red. Okay, you guys shut up for now. With a wave of Shaji's wand, the Dursleys were petrified by the petrification spell. Harry, do you mind if I call you that? I don't mind. Harry now had countless reasons in his mind and wanted to ask Shaji. Okay, let's sit down, eat something, and talk. Shaji waved his magic wand, and his wet clothes became dry and tidy. Then he waved his wand again, and the few stones on the ground turned into two comfortable sofa chairs and a coffee table. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot, I brought you a present. Although I came in a hurry, I didn't have time to write on it. Shaji's ring flickered, and a large cake appeared on the coffee table. This is a cake he bought on the street temporarily. After pouring Harry a cup of hot black tea, he lit the cold fireplace with a fire spell. Shaji began to tell Harry about the magic world. Harry, you are a wizard like me. A what? Harry asked suspiciously. A wizard? Harry, I know that your uncle and aunt have never told you a single word about the wizarding world. So I'm going to tell you from the beginning. You just listen to it as a story for now, and when you're done listening, do you have any questions, I will answer you later, how about it? Harry nodded blankly. I'll try to keep it short, you can listen while eating. Shaji said while helping Harry cut the cake. Before you were born, there was a bad noseless wizard named Voldemort in the magic world, who did all kinds of evil. And your parents are heroes against this bad wizard. Together with many like-minded good wizards, they have been fighting against that noseless wizard. Bad wizard. Shaji spoke very fast, but his voice was very clear. He started talking about Harry's parents fighting Voldemort, until Harry's parents were killed, then little Harry rebounded the spell and defeated Voldemort, and then little Harry was sent to the Dursley's house. After Shaji briefly talked to Harry, he took out a letter from the ring. It was Harry's acceptance letter. Here's the letter you've been wanting to read. It's from Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Afterwards, Shaji introduced Hogwarts to Harry, as well as the headmaster of the school, Professor Albus Dumbledore. Shaji said, now you know why even toddlers in the wizarding world have heard your name. Because you defeated Voldemort, whom everyone feared. But, I don't have any memory at all. But, 
A green light suddenly disappeared in Harry's mind, and then he seemed to hear a murderous, cold, loud laughter in his mind. Shaji, I think you must have made a mistake. If I am a wizard like you, why is Dudley even chasing me? Harry, you are a real wizard. Have you noticed anything special about yourself? For example, no matter how many times you cut your hair, after one night, it's as if you haven't cut it. Harry's eyes lit up. No little wizard is born with magic. You have to go to Hogwarts, there, you can learn how to use your own magic, and you can learn all the magic I just used. With a flick of her wand, Shaji broke the petrification spell on the Dursleys. As soon as Uncle Vernon recovered, he started yelling, I'm not going to pay to send him to some magic school to learn juggling from an old crook. Shaji stretched out his left hand, and an invisible force strangled Uncle Fanon's throat, and then Uncle Fanon lifted his throat as if being pinched by an invisible big hand. Uncle Vernon kicked his legs in horror. A face quickly turned into a liver color. Screaming, Petunia rushed up and grabbed Uncle Vernon's leg, trying to pull him off. Shaji's voice came icily, are you sure this power is juggling? As soon as he let go of his hand, Uncle Vernon fell down. He was panting heavily, Shaji said calmly, you can't stop him from going to Hogwarts. It's for your own good too. For our own good, you're just kidding. Aunt Petunia squealed. You don't believe it? Well, or, I am obliged to tell you some science, a monster called Silent. Shaji stood up and approached the Dursleys slowly. The Dursleys looked at the boy in front of them, as if they had seen the scariest demon, and huddled in the corner of the house in horror. Shaji said self-sufficiently, when the magic power in a little wizard's body is not effectively guided, it will gradually accumulate in the little wizard's body, and finally form this monster called Moran, and the little wizard who carries this Moran A wizard is also called an obscurity. When an obscurity is stimulated, the obscurity in his body will rush out, destroying everything around him. A monster like Moran is irrational and only has a destructive instinct. Every time Moran appears, it is a catastrophe. So Harry Potter must go to Hogwarts to go to school, where he can learn how to use the magic power on his body. Otherwise, he is very likely to become an obscure. And according to my guess, you don't seem to be friendly to him, then the probability that he will be stimulated to release the silence in his body will become extremely high. On that day, everything around him will be torn to pieces by this monster. Not only you, but also the people in your place will suffer. That's why I say, let Harry go to Hogwarts to study, it's also for your own good. In fact, not all little wizards can be silently formed, but here Shaji deliberately did not mention this point in order to achieve the effect. You, you're just scaremongering. You're just a bunch of freaks, like my sister. I'm never going to let that kid go to that magic school again. Aunt Petunia screamed. No matter what contemptuous language you use to describe magic and us wizards, you all understand the fact that magic does exist in this world. Shaji said calmly, perhaps the paleness of Xu Yan's words can't let you understand the horror of Moran. So, as he said, he took out a big pipe bought in Diagon Alley from the ring, and the big pipe was still lit. This is what he specially prepared for this moment. He picked up his pipe, took a deep breath, and exhaled a thick puff of smoke. The smoke drifted into the air, and suddenly, the smoke twisted strangely, and then twisted in the air to form a picture. It was a peaceful neighborhood, and in the middle of the street was a child in ragged clothes. Suddenly, a large wave of extremely evil black mist rose from that child in ragged clothes. The black mist rose into the sky like a tornado, ruthlessly raging towards the surrounding streets. The black mist was like a hurricane, tearing the surrounding houses, cars, and even the people who had no time to escape to pieces. In just ten seconds, the originally peaceful street turned into a large piece of ruins, and I couldn't even tell what it looked like. The picture gradually turned into smoke again, and finally dissipated in the air. This is actually just a picture made by Shaji with some small methods in transfiguration. It is not real, but Shaji's full-level occlumency makes his brain power extremely powerful. Therefore, the picture he imagined was terrifyingly real. When the Dursley family saw that scene, their hearts were already shaken, especially when they saw the black mist raging around, tearing several people apart. She screamed in fear. This is a real scene. I'm just showing you this picture as it is. You don't want Harry to become like the boy in the picture. 
Sha Ji continued to fool around. Of course, not all obsessed people will lose their sanity after becoming silent. Because of the power of love, a very small number of people can gain their own sanity even when they become silent. If you still don't believe in silent in terms of strength, I can give you a taste of it on the spot. Because, I am one of the very few silent people who can become silent and remain awake. The Dursleys looked at Sha Ji, their pupils constricted suddenly, because the boy in front of them had the same black aura as the boy in the picture just now. Boom, Sha Ji directly transformed into Mo Ran, and the entire wooden house was torn to pieces by Sha Ji, but under his exquisite control. Neither the Dursleys in the middle nor Harry was hurt. Ah, the Dursleys screamed in horror. In the picture just now, the scene of those few people being torn apart was skipped in their minds. No, please, I promise, I promise Harry Potter to go to that wizarding school. Storms come and go as fast as they come. When the Dursleys opened their eyes, the evil black mist in front of them had disappeared, replaced by Shaji with calm eyes, and Harry beside him with a shocked face. At this time, the wooden house was gone, and even the dark clouds that should have existed in the sky just after the storm was gone. The clear night sky was full of beautiful stars, Shaji knew that the dark clouds had been swept away. Of course you can continue to prevent Harry from going to school, if you believe that your love for him will awaken his reason. Shaji's words became the last straw that overwhelmed the luck of the Dursleys. How they treated Harry these years, they knew in their hearts, they understood that it was impossible for Harry to feel that they loved him. Well, whatever you want, take him away, take him to that Hogwarts. Uncle Vernon collapsed on the ground and said weakly. Sha Ji flicked his magic wand lightly, and the broken wooden house gradually recovered under Sha Ji's terrifying magic power. He conjured up a few more chairs, since this is the case, come and sit down, we can have a good talk now. Early the next morning, Harry slowly opened his eyes. He seemed to have had a dream last night. He dreamed of a dark-haired boy about his own age, and the boy told him many things. For example, if I am a little wizard, my parents didn't die in a car accident, but died at the hands of a very bad black wizard. He will go to a magic school called Hogwarts. And most importantly, his uncle and aunt signed a contract with the black-haired boy, promising that they would treat him like Dudley in the future. But all this should be just a dream, it is really a beautiful dream. How could the Dursleys treat themselves the same way they treated Dudley? He was getting ready, because Aunt Petunia would punish him for not having breakfast if he got up late. Harry soon found himself lying on a nice and comfortable big bed. And the black-haired boy was cooking breakfast on the other side of the dilapidated wooden house, while the Dursleys were helping out politely. None of this is a dream. In Harry's heart, at this moment, he felt an extremely happy emotion. This was something he had never experienced before. All through breakfast, Harry thought he was living a dream. What's up with such smiling uncles and aunts? What happened to such a cute Dudley? After the meal, Shaji waved her magic wand to restore everything in the wooden house to its original state. That beautiful big bed, comfortable sofa, and silver tea table. All changed back to the original appearance, a pile of rotten wood. Harry watched all this with admiration on his face. No matter how many times he watched this miraculous scene, he still felt that he couldn't get enough of it. Such a magical magic, can I learn it in the future? Sha Ji led Harry out of the cabin, then turned around and handed Dursley a piece of paper. If it's convenient, drive to this address this afternoon to pick up Harry. Also, don't forget the contract we signed. Of course, I'm very contractual, Dursley nodded, grinning so much that his mouth almost reached his neck. Harry was surprised to see Uncle Vernon like this. I don't know what Sha Ji talked to the Dursleys after he fell asleep last night. Obviously, when Uncle Finan was forced to sign the contract last night, his expression was as uncomfortable as if he had eaten a fly. Harry noticed that Uncle Vernon looked at him with a hint of love. What a ghost. Could it be that Sha Ji cast some magic on Uncle Vernon? Sha Ji, why, I mean, why did Uncle Vernon, their attitude changed so quickly? Watching the Dursleys return to the cabin, Harry couldn't help asking. Sha Ji smiled and said, I just signed a contract with them, and then made a deal. Specifically, we will talk about it after we leave here. Of course Sha Ji didn't cast a spell on the Dursleys, which wasn't allowed either. In fact, after terrorizing the Dursleys with silence last night, 
Shaji took out a piece of parchment with dense handwriting while the iron was hot, and forced the Dursleys to sign. Then tell him that this is a magic contract, and if the Dursleys can't treat Harry like their own son in the future, then something extremely tragic will happen to their family. This is of course Shah Ji's nonsense, it's just a piece of ordinary parchment, the content on it is written by Shah Ji with magic indiscriminately, it's not a magic contract at all, but Shah Ji played a little trick. When Dursley signed, he gave the parchment a little magic effect, which made Dursley believe that he had signed a magical contract. However, after giving a big stick, you have to give a little sweet date. After sending Harry to bed, he took the Dursleys to sit aside again, and told him that the magic contract was not one-sided, as long as he could act according to the contract before Harry graduated, then the Dursleys would not only nothing happened, and I could still get two big gold bricks. Then Shah Ji gave him a big gold brick, saying that this was half of it, and the other half would not be given to Harry until he graduated, but Dursley needed to keep all of this secret. After all, Dursley is just a businessman, and now he only needs to pay a small price, and he can get a huge wealth that will allow him to live comfortably for the rest of his life. How could he not agree? Harry is now his cash cow and his life-saving talisman, so the way he looks at Harry is of course different. Adopting Harry in the past was just a duty, and it was useless except for extra expenses. Moreover, Dursley had always had a bad impression of Harry's father. That's why Harry had such a painful childhood. Shah Ji, who owns the Philosopher's Stone, doesn't feel sorry for this gold brick at all, after all, it was turned from stones picked up everywhere. Shah Ji didn't think there was anything wrong with buying the Dursleys with money. The Philosopher's Stone was also one of his powers, and he would be a fool if he kept it hidden. As for whether there will still be people who doubt the origin of his gold, he can also explain it. My pet, her venom is worth 500 galleons an ounce. I still have several barrels left. Harry, grab my hand, it may be a bit uncomfortable for the first time, you have to be prepared. Shah Ji stretched out his hand. Harry grabbed Shah Ji's hand suspiciously, and then there was the sound of a whip hitting the floor. Shah Ji and Harry were lost on the spot. Apparate, this is what Shah Ji asked Mr. Wally for advice when he was recuperating at the Wally family manor. Mr. Wally readily agreed, anyway, as long as Shah Ji doesn't want to abduct his daughter now, you can do whatever you want. Shah Ji of the Great Magician Template has profound magic power, and learning this magic is as easy as drinking water. Crack, the place where they appeared was an alley not far from the leaky cauldron. Shah Ji waited patiently for Harry to spit up the breakfast he had just eaten this morning, and then took Harry to the leaky cauldron. Along the way, he told Harry that he tricked the Dursleys into signing a magical contract. Thinking of how the Dursleys were being cheated, Harry laughed so hard that Harry felt that this was really relieved, and even the uncomfortable feeling caused by the apparition just now subsided a lot. However, Shah Ji still hid the fact that he bought the Dursleys with money, and only said that he was entrusted to hand over some maintenance money to the Dursleys on behalf of his parents. You'll have to go back to the Dursleys when you're on vacation, but they promise to treat you better than Dudley from now on. If they treat you badly, let me know. Of course, you have to keep it secret. Don't miss out. Thank you, Shah Ji, Harry said seriously. It's okay, Professor Dumbledore asked me to pick you up, but I think, if there is a way to make your life more comfortable in the future, why shouldn't I do it? Shah Ji blinked. The current Harry was extremely grateful to this boy who was almost the same age as him beside him. Shah Ji just looked at his grateful and admiring eyes, and nodded secretly, that's it. The first step plan, success. Only when you are grateful to a person will you have a sense of trust. At this moment, Shah Ji only needs to plant a seed of self-confidence in Harry's heart. As for how to make a person feel grateful to you, just send charcoal in the snow. Even if the other party knows that you have other intentions, they can't help but feel grateful to you for the help you give in a timely manner. What's more, a child like Harry who has no experience in the world will naturally not feel that Shah Ji has other plans. The leaky cauldron arrived soon, and Harry was surprised to find that when passers-by on the street passed by, they couldn't help but make a detour and avoid it. It's here, Shah Ji only looked at the dilapidated wooden door of the leaky cauldron in front of her. I'm currently living here temporarily, just waiting for the official start of school on September 1st. Shah Ji pushed open the wooden door of the leaky cauldron, and walked in with Harry. 
A man whose hair almost fell out and looked like a flat walnut saw Sha Ji, and greeted him, Sha Ji, you didn't spend the night at the bar last night. By the way, your hot pot is very good. If you don't if you don't mind, I'd like to put it on the menu in my bar. Of course I wouldn't mind, Tom, as a matter of fact, if you had it in your shop, I wouldn't have to make it myself. That would be great, if you ordered it, I won't charge you. Ha, huh, this, could it be? Harry Potter. Tom stared closely at the scar on Harry's forehead. The originally bustling bar became quiet at this moment, as if there was something special about that name. All eyes fell on Harry. Then a group of people rushed up to shake his hand. Dot dot dot. Although Harry heard Shah Ji say that he was famous in the magic world, he never knew it would be so exaggerated. Shah Ji also saw Professor Quirrell in the crowd just now, just like in the plot, with a ridiculous scarf on his head, stumbling, he even shook hands with Harry. Shah Ji was secretly vigilant. Shah Ji pulled Harry, and managed to squeeze out of the enthusiastic crowd. They passed through the bar and came to a small courtyard surrounded by walls. Remember this, Harry, when you come by yourself in the future, you will be able to find your way. Sha Ji stood next to the trash can, count up to three yuan, and then count down to two yuan. Sha Ji took out his ebony wand and tapped it lightly on the wall three times. Then the bricks on that brick wall began to automatically jump to the two sides one by one. After a while, a passage appeared in front of Harry, and inside the passage was the bustling Diagon Alley. Sha Ji walked in with a stunned Harry, as the letter I sent you last night still with you. Look at the list of things to buy on the second page. We need to buy all these things later. Harry took out the letter and looked at the row of equipment names on the second page, what kind of wand, cauldron. After a while, Harry raised his head a little embarrassedly, Sha Ji, I actually don't have much money. The Dursleys never give me pocket money, so. Sha Ji took out a key and stuffed it in Harry's hand, your parents have left you a large sum of money. This is the key to your home's vault. Well, let's go to Gringotts to get the money first. Bar. Sha Ji took Harry to the direction of Gringotts, telling him some stories about the goblins in Gringotts along the way. Their figures gradually faded away. Suddenly, a man wearing a cloak whose face could not be seen appeared abruptly in the shadow of an alley. He watched their backs quietly, and disappeared after a while. Coming to Gringotts, Sha Ji told an idle goblin what she wanted, and handed over Harry's vault key for it to examine. Then Sha Ji showed him the sealed letter that Dumbledore had sent him. Dumbledore asked me to come pick up the gold curry's item number 713. Harry asked Sha Ji what that thing was, and Sha Ji said that he didn't know, only that it was the task of Professor Dumbledore. In the end, a goblin named Griphook took them on the Gringotts Underground Railway in a small car. After opening his own safe, Harry was stunned. He never knew that he had such a large sum of money hidden underground in London. Sha Ji helped him pack enough money for two semesters, and handed it to Harry. One gold galleon is equal to 17 silver sickles, and one silver sickle is equal to 29 copper nuts. It's quite complicated. I remembered it for a long time before I remembered it. But Harry thought it was okay, and there was nothing difficult to remember. Sha Ji let Harry take the money bag, and then the two of them followed Griphook and got into the small car again. This thing is like a roller coaster, Sha Ji felt a little excited just sitting there. After a while, they arrived at number 713 vault, and Sha Ji successfully put the dirty little bag wrapped in brown paper into the ring. Harry really wanted Sha Ji to open the small bag and see what it was. But before he could say it, Sha Ji suddenly shouted, be careful. Then Harry felt as if his body was pushed away by an invisible force. As soon as that force pushed him onto the school bus, Harry saw a green light flying past Sha Ji's face. Sha Ji threw the pool ring back into the car again. Take him away immediately. Griphook didn't say a word, as soon as he landed on the car, he immediately started the car. Harry just felt the strong wind hit his face. He turned around and saw Sha Ji behind him, getting farther and farther away from him. Harry could still see clearly, a wizard in a black cloak who couldn't see clearly, watched him go away in the car unwillingly, then turned around and started fighting with Sha Ji. Harry could still see from a distance that the battle was extremely fierce. Floors and walls are blasted to pieces from time to time by spells. Sha Ji saw Harry going away, 
so she stopped pretending, and immediately raised her hand to cast a death curse. Boom, the full level killing curse is extraordinary. The flickering green light illuminated the original dark underground passage. The black wizard didn't expect that Shaji could only release such a powerful killing curse silently. He hurriedly rolled to the side, barely dodging the killing curse. The green light hit the wall behind him, and the falling stones made his back hurt. Shaji understood that this black-robed wizard must be Quirrell. In the original book, he broke into Gringotts after Hagrid took the Philosopher's Stone, but now, he came in ahead of time. Shaji guessed that Quirrell was only planning to break into Gringotts to steal the Sorcerer's Stone. He must have been in the Leaky Cauldron, and he saw that he was the only child who brought Harry Potter into Diagon Alley. Therefore, he decided to kill himself and Harry Potter while stealing the Philosopher's Stone. In the original book, Harry was accompanied by Hagrid. With Hagrid by his side, Quirrell naturally didn't dare to have Harry's idea. Don't think that Hagrid is weak, Hagrid's magic resistance is very high, and his magic ability is actually not weak. And Shaji's guess is almost the same as the truth. Quirrell didn't think at that time that a child could protect Harry Potter under his hands. But after he followed them quietly for a while with special means, he was pleasantly surprised to find that Shaji was not only the one who brought Harry Potter into Diagon Alley, but also the one sent by Dumbledore to take the Sorcerer's Stone. For a moment, Quirrell was a little dizzy from the huge sense of happiness, so at the moment Shaji got the Philosopher's Stone, he brazenly launched an attack. But unexpectedly, Shaji is not as easy to deal with as he imagined. Shaji's crisis awareness talent was activated early, and because of this, he had time to push Griphook and Harry into the car and let them escape. Shaji stopped pretending now, it was a showdown, and the death curse was thrown on Quirrell's head as if he didn't want money. Shaji didn't even dodge Quirrell's death-killing curse. He waved his wand lightly, and a piece of gravel on the ground turned into a delicate shield. Block it. Quirrell, who is as silly as he is, also has a pit in his head, and has been attacking with the killing curse, but if he casts an explosion curse, Shaji's shield can't stop it. When Quirrell shot at Shaji again with the killing curse, Shaji's figure suddenly disappeared strangely. Hound pace. At this time, Shaji has teleported behind him. And in his left hand, there appeared a long sword made of faint blue fianfire. Then stab Quirrell hard in the back. Grindelwald's fianfire has this advantage, it doesn't burn its own people. The sword of fianfire just missed Quirrell's back. But the moment fianfire ignited his clothes, Quirrell turned into a cloud of black mist, and fled away in the blink of an eye. Shaji sensed an extremely evil and cold aura in the black mist. In the distance, Shaji could still hear Quirrell's miserable cry. Although Li Huo's long sword only touched a little bit of clothes, it was Li Huo. Quirrell is still seriously injured. Shaji knew that it was impossible for Quirrell to dodge his own attack this time, as long as Fianfire was stuck, he would basically kneel. But Quirrell not only survived, but escaped smoothly. This proves that the noseless monster attached to the back of Quirrell's head woke up at the moment of life and death. Then it took over Quirrell's body in an instant, and fled away. Shaji remembered that cold breath deeply in her heart. Sooner or later they will meet again. At this time, the sound of the whip being whipped continuously came from around Shaji. Figures appeared around Shaji. They all held up their wands and pointed at Shaji. It should be that Gringotts temporarily lifted the anti-apparition spell, and then provided the coordinates here, allowing the Aurors to apparate over. With specific coordinates, they can apparate in places they haven't been. Stay still. Drop your wand. Shaji sighed. No matter which movie it was in, the police always came last at such times. He's not worried, just explain this kind of thing. But his expression suddenly changed. The wand flickered, a piece of gravel flew up, and quickly transformed into a huge shield, blocking Shaji's face. Then a green light smashed hard on Shaji's shield. Quirrell hasn't left yet, Shaji's face darkened instantly. Because it was a reminder of crisis vigilance, Shaji just raised her shield in advance. Those Aurors were already very nervous. After seeing Shaji suddenly transform into a shield, they all thought that he wanted to resist, and raised their magic wands to attack Shaji. Worth, Shaji was very angry, is this an Auror? This shit is a bunch of idiots. Can't they see such a big green light? Shaji angrily launched a counterattack. 
Of course, no unforgivable curse was used this time. He knew that Quirrell must have taken the opportunity to escape by now. By the time Dumbledore came to the vault, the Aurors were already lying on the floor in a mess. Shaji stood between them without even taking a breath. Shaji turned his head and saw Dumbledore and Minister Fudge beside him. At this time, a large number of Aurors from the Ministry of Magic came one after another. Fudge stopped the Aurors who were raising their wands, of course he recognized Shaji, this is the prophet of the future, it was too late for him to fawn on him, these idiots actually planned to attack him. Dumbledore scanned the scene, most of the fallen Aurors were under the petrification spell or the stun spell. He walked up to Shaji and asked in surprise, what's going on? While I was fetching your things, I was attacked by a dark wizard in a black cloak. I fought off the dark wizard, and then the Aurors came, and they attacked me indiscriminately. I killed them it's all down, Shaji said calmly. As soon as Shaji finished speaking, the crowd at the scene became commotion. What did they hear? A kid who looked like he had just turned 11 years old, probably didn't even know where the gates of Hogwarts were going to open, but he boasted that he was alone and picked an Auror team. Boy, this is not a place for bragging, we Aurors are all elites. If you want to bring them down, you just have to rely on your inability. Tell me honestly, what's going on? An ugly Chinese Nian Auror said angrily. Shaji just glanced at him, then, respectful sir, why don't you rescue your group of elite Aurors and ask carefully? Maybe they fell over a stone and fell unconscious. How elite they are, that's a very likely thing to happen. The middle-aged Auror was almost pissed off by Shaji's yin and yang words. Just kidding, the young master has a poisonous tongue, but it's not easy to hate you under the tutelage of Kashan Della. Over there, someone has already broken the spell for those Aurors. After questioning, everyone realized that Shaji hadn't lied just now. He overthrew an Auror team by himself. Everyone was shocked, the middle-aged Auror couldn't keep his eyes from popping out. Fudge came over and said, they said they saw you using polymorph to conjure a shield, so they thought you wanted to resist, so they launched the attack. Shaji brought the shield that was still deformed in front of Dumbledore, I found that someone was attacking me with the killing curse, so I blocked it with this shield, but they didn't expect that they didn't notice the green light, actually attacked me like this, the real attacker. But he took this opportunity and slipped away. This was left by Shaji on purpose, and he didn't use this shield to block spells in subsequent battles. This was proof that it wasn't he who wanted to fight the Aurors, but someone who really wanted to hit him with the killing curse. Dumbledore studied the only indentation on the shield. It's indeed the mark of the killing curse. Dumbledore laughed. Also, very nice transfiguration. After Fudge heard this sentence, he apologized to Shaji again and again. Then he ran to the team of Aurors who had just been rescued and scolded them for being idiots. Fudge was furious, this is a little wizard with more talent than Dumbledore when he was young. In time, it'll be another Dumbledore. And a prophet of the future. If I turned against him because of these idiots, I would really want to cry without tears. Professor Dumbledore, how is Harry? I let him go first just now. Shaji asked with concern. Dumbledore smiled and said, thanks to your vigilance, Harry is unharmed and waiting for us with Hagrid. Oh, Hagrid is our gamekeeper at Hogwarts, a good man. That's really great. If something happens to Harry, I will definitely feel guilty for the rest of my life. Shaji said seriously. If something happened to Harry, his reward would also be wasted. With a full level of occlumency, Dumbledore felt his sincerity. It's a good thing you're all fine, well, let's go up, they can take care of it here. Harry is still waiting for you up there, it seems that you get along very well. Of course, we're friends now. When Dumbledore heard the word, friend, a gleam of joy flashed across Dumbledore's face. By the way, Professor Dumbledore, this is what you asked me to pick up. The dark wizard should have come for it. Shaji took out the dirty little bag and handed it to Dumbledore. Dumbledore glanced at Shaji with a complicated expression on his face. He took the paper bag and said guiltily, I have to apologize to you for this, Shaji. If I hadn't asked you to fetch this thing for me, you and Harry would have there will be no danger. Shaji shook his head, it was just an accident, no one wanted it. If you really feel sorry, then treat me and Harry to an ice cream. Oh, of course, of course, 
I also like ice cream, and I know a shop where the ice cream is the best. Speaking of sweets, Dumbledore's emotions immediately rose. It was indeed an accident. When Hagrid came to pick up the original book, nothing happened. This happened now only because Quirrell thought he was a better bully than Hagrid. Harry heaved a sigh of relief when he saw Shaji appeared in front of him unharmed. I saw you were, fighting with that person. I'm really worried about you. I'm fine, Harry, this is the headmaster of Hogwarts, Professor Dumbledore. I think you've already met. Harry nodded. Okay, it's okay, Professor Dumbledore said he wants to treat us to ice cream. I have to say that the ice cream recommended by Dumbledore is really delicious, and Shaji likes it very much. Florin Fusco, owner of the ice cream parlor, was talking enthusiastically to Dumbledore. And Shaji and Harry were sitting on a chair beside each other with a huge ice cream and eating it. Hagrid thanked Shaji from the sidelines. It's really thanks to you, Shaji, if it wasn't for you, Harry might be in danger. Running Gorgon, how could anyone dare to break into Gringotts and commit murder? Hagrid kept expressing his gratitude, which made Shaji feel a little embarrassed. You know, if Hagrid had brought Harry to Gringotts instead of himself, this would never have happened. In the original book, Quirrell was plotting to steal the Philosopher's Stone, so there was no need to risk being right with this big guy, so he wouldn't follow Hagrid into Gringotts in advance. And he didn't know that Dumbledore would let the big man come to get the Philosopher's Stone. So when he broke into Gringotts, he just missed it with Hagrid. Perhaps because of concerns about safety, Dumbledore and Hagrid never left Shaji and Harry for a whole day. As for how cool it is to be led by Dumbledore to buy things, it is really hard to describe, anyway, it is very cool. For such a great man, wherever he went, there were wizards who saluted him politely. Therefore, Shaji didn't find the opportunity to say something, special, to Harry. The task of instilling ideas is a long way to go, and it seems that we can only find opportunities in the future. Hagrid bought Harry a snowy owl as a birthday present, and Harry happily named it Hedwig. It seems that at this moment, the plot slowly returns to the original work. But Quirrell has already been severely injured by Shaji, and I don't know if we can see this guy again when the school starts. In the evening, the group planned to have dinner at the Leaky Cauldron before saying goodbye. Then something happened that made Shaji very sad. He actually received a howler letter. He finally understood why he was restless all day today. He forgot to write back to Kashandela last night. Dumbledore reminded Shah Ji with a smile that if the letter was not opened in time, the consequences would be quite bad, and then he reminded Harry next to him to plug his ears in advance. With trembling hands, Shah Ji opened the red envelope that had started to emit black smoke. The envelope suddenly turned into a mouth, and Cassandella's voice resounded throughout the leaky cauldron. Shah Ji. How dare you do that? I waited all night for your reply. You haven't replied to me until now. Until just now, my mother told me that you had a fight with a dark wizard and a team of aurors in Gringotts. Mom and Dad are saying that you are amazing. Do you also feel that you are very powerful now? How dare you? Have you forgotten what you promised me? What if you die? You are only 11 years old now. You haven't even been to Hogwarts. Now, immediately, immediately. Let your stupid owl bring me your reply. If there is a next time, I swear, be sure to strangle you with your own hands before you commit suicide. As soon as the voice fell, the envelope burned automatically and turned into a mass of ashes. Shaji rubbed her ears palely, I knew. The entire leaky cauldron fell silent after the howling letter. After a while, all the wizards in the leaky cauldron suddenly cheered together. Tavernkeeper Tom, holding up a glass of butterbeer, yelled, Shah Ji. Boy, you are amazing. Oh, so young to take down a squad of horrors. I'm already looking forward to seeing the next day's daily profit. It's amazing. Professor Dumbledore, is this your personal disciple? I've only taught him for a short time, but there's no doubting Shah Ji's excellence. Dumbledore said with a smile. No wonder, I seem to have met another Professor Dumbledore. He was as brilliant as he was when he was young. Oh, your compliments make me blush. Young man, although you are very powerful, according to my experience, you should hurry up and write back to your little girlfriend. Maybe a second howler letter is on the way. Ha ha ha. No one doubted the authenticity of this matter, 
because Dumbledore was sitting next to Shaji, and his closeness to Dumbledore had been seen by everyone before. Dumbledore treated him like a nephew, and most importantly, Dumbledore did not deny that Shaji was his direct disciple. Harry said to Shaji in amazement, You already have a girlfriend. You are amazing. Shaji rolled her eyes, took out a piece of parchment with a frowning face, and began to reply to Kashan Della. Kashan Della, your howler letter came just in time. At the time, I was having dinner with Professor Dumbledore in the Leaky Cauldron. Now, everyone in the tavern thinks you are my girlfriend. I can't let me die alone. Shaji thought silently. The next day's daily profit, the content is extremely exciting. The boy who lived, Grin gets attacked. Dumbledore's personal disciple, Shaji. Shocked, the little wizard swept the Auror team. Does the Auror team need to be reshuffled? Harry Potter is in distress at Gringotts. Gringotts refuses to comment on this matter. The record that Gringotts has never been broken into has been broken. Secretary Fudge delivered an important speech. Dot dot dot. Shaji didn't want to be famous at first, but there were too many people present. And Dumbledore took him and Harry around Diagon Alley all day afterwards. Plus Cassandella's howler letter. So now everyone knows. This little wizard named Shaji, although he hadn't entered Hogwarts yet, was alone in Gringotts and repelled the dark wizard who broke into Gringotts. Moreover, if those Aurors hadn't been so idiotic and mistook Shaji for an enemy to besiege, the black wizard might have been caught by Shaji. Even so, Shaji still swept the entire Auror team besieging him by himself. These terrifying achievements all come from a little wizard who has just turned 11 years old. For a moment, everyone couldn't believe it. However, someone heard from Dumbledore that Dumbledore had taught Shaji himself, and he did not deny that Shaji was his own disciple. In this way, people feel that it is only natural that Shaji can only achieve such a result. The personal disciple of the greatest wizard of this century, Albus Dumbledore, shouldn't he be stronger? Dot dot dot. Hogwarts, headmaster's office. Smiling, Dumbledore grabbed a lemon sherbet and popped it into his mouth. This is his favorite candy besides the pile of cockroaches. When he left that day, Shaji gave him a big bag. Severus, Shaji's suspicion should be cleared now. Harry is unscathed, and the philosopher's stone is unharmed. Hum. Snape stood in front of the desk, and there was a soft sound in his throat. If you didn't listen carefully, you would think he didn't say anything. However, that just disassociates him from the Dark Lord. I still don't trust the kid. Snape was as cold as ever. Severus, what are you worried about? He saved Harry and the Philosopher's Stone. Even if it proves that he has nothing to do with the Dark Lord, it doesn't rule out the possibility that he, Shaji, will become the new Dark Lord in the future. Snape said slowly. This requires our joint efforts, Severus. He will soon become our student. Dumbledore said happily, isn't our duty as professors to teach students well so that they don't make detours. HMPH, I only hope that his ridiculous troll head hasn't been carried away by the praises of others. Dumbledore's direct disciple, hey, is this what you're aiming for? Mark him with your mark early on, said Snape grimly. Oh, Severus, it's really sad that you're so suspicious of an old man. HMPH, anyway, I'll keep an eye on him. If he dares to make a mistake. Suddenly, Snape stepped forward and put down a bunch of bottles and jars on Dumbledore's desk. This is my leftover potion. It's useless. I give it to you. Whoever you give it to has nothing to do with me. Snape finished speaking word by word, turned around and walked away. He looks like a black bat. Severus. Keep an eye on Quirrell, he just got back from Albania, you know where that is, and he's been acting weird lately. Snape paused slightly, nodded slightly, and then continued to walk out the door. Dumbledore looked at the pile of valuable bottles and jars, and even saw a small bottle of Felicia in it. Dumbledore shook his head resignedly. He understood that this was Snape lending his hand to give Shaji a thank you gift. Because Shaji protected Harry Potter, her son. Dumbledore was about to put away the bottles when Professor McGonagall stormed in. He sighed helplessly, Oh, my dear Professor, I know it is very dangerous to let Shaji go to Gringotts. I will definitely respect your suggestion next time. Of course you should listen to me on this matter, Dumbledore. Although Shaji has great abilities, after all, he just turned 11 this year. 
We can't let him not even see the gate of Hogwarts. Leave this world early. Dot dot dot. Sha Ji was not dazzled by other people's praise as a professor said. He also didn't care about his own fame, because he had never been interested in it. Therefore, in the month before the start of school, Sha Ji continued to work hard to complete the tasks issued by the system. With Sha Ji's efforts, Hermione and Harry became friends ahead of schedule. And because of the contract signed with Sha Ji, the Dursleys also let Harry move out of the stairwell ahead of time. Now, Harry's life at the Dursleys, house was much better than before. Moreover, Harry's new bedroom has also become a stronghold for the three of them to gather frequently. The three of them often stay together. Sha Ji sometimes helped Hermione preview her lessons, and sometimes persuaded Harry to preview potions, but he never took it seriously. But most of the time, Sha Ji was just telling them stories about the wizarding world before Voldemort fell. Today, after talking about a few more evil deeds committed by Voldemort and his minions. Sha Ji asked suddenly, Harry, Voldemort and his minions killed so many people, and Voldemort also killed your parents, do you, hate them? Sha Ji was guiding Harry to think. Explaining the truth to a person is far worse than letting a person figure it out and realize it by himself. Sure enough, Harry started thinking. Yeah, do I hate them? I should have had a happy family. There are fathers and mothers who love me. I should have had a happy childhood too. But I don't now. I grew up in the Dursleys. I have no friends since childhood. Since he was a child, he lived in a dark stairwell, next to spiders. Wearing Dudley's old clothes. Next to Dudley's bullying. This wasn't supposed to be my life. But what caused all this? It's because of Voldemort and his lackeys. They brutally killed my parents. Because of them, I lost everything. I have to linger at the Dursleys. I have to endure their slander against my parents. Had to suffer all kinds of hardships here. Dot dot dot. Yes, I hate them. If Voldemort hadn't fallen, I would have found him. Revenge myself. Do you really think that he is dead? Sha Ji said in a deep voice. At this time, Hermione, who was listening all the time, said, but, according to the book, he hasn't appeared in a long time, after being bounced by his own spell. Just because he didn't show up doesn't mean he's dead, Hermione. It just means he may have suffered an injury that won't heal in a short period of time. Harry, do you remember that dark wizard you met at Gringotts that day? Of course I do. I still remember the look in his eyes. He wanted to kill me. If you hadn't pushed me into the car, I might be dead by now. Harry's breath came short. After he was defeated by me, he turned into a cloud of black mist and fled. In that black mist, I felt unprecedented evil. This kind of evil, in this world, I think, there is only Voldemort. Sha Ji paused, I'm sure Voldemort is attached to that dark wizard's body. I believe that if it wasn't because Voldemort was in a bad state at that time, I might have turned into a corpse. You mean, Voldemort is still alive, Harry said excitedly, so he will definitely come back. Oh, God, Hermione covered her mouth. She had already believed in Sha Ji's horror stories about Voldemort, so she was also full of fear for those dark years, and she didn't want Voldemort to recover at all. The day will come. Have you spoken to Professor Dumbledore about this? Professor Dumbledore must have known about it a long time ago, so he asked me to get that thing. Although I don't know what it is, this thing must have played a major role in his recovery. Sha Ji didn't say that's the Philosopher's Stone. Harry said seriously. So he has already started to act now, and he is going to prepare for his return. That's right, he's only temporarily lost his mana, but there's no guarantee that one day in the future, he'll be able to regain his strength and come back in full swing. Sha Ji paused again. Harry, he still has many lackeys like the Dark Wizard that day, lurking silently. The wizarding world is not as peaceful as it seems on the surface. Suddenly Harry said calmly, so I've never been really safe, have I? Sha Ji didn't answer, he asked instead, Harry, are you afraid? I'm not afraid, Harry shouted angrily, let them come, I will definitely make them look good. But you are still weak and rely on the protection of others. I want to become stronger, Sha Ji. Harry looked at Sha Ji firmly, you are about my age, why are you so strong? Is it because of talent? Of course not, Harry. Sha Ji said, clutching his conscience, it doesn't have much to do with talent that I can become stronger. 
What is that for? Of course it's because of hatred. Sha Ji's eyes remained calm, human potential is unlimited. And hatred can urge me to tap my potential and make me stronger. Hate, Sha Ji, actually I've always wanted to ask you, what happened to you before? I asked Hagrid, but he refused to tell me, and told me, if possible, never to ask you. Harry said in a tone. His curiosity has always been strong, so he took the opportunity to ask. Sha Ji, like himself, is only 11 years old this year, but why is he able to fight such an evil and powerful black wizard? Can you still sweep the Auror team? What did he go through? Hermione also knew what happened to Sha Ji and Harry that day, and she didn't really know how difficult it is to transform a phoenix like Sha Ji did that day until she tried transfiguration. So she was also curious about what Sha Ji had experienced. Sha Ji was silent, looking out the window without speaking, but Hermione noticed that his gaze was out of focus. I'm sorry, Sha Ji. I didn't mean to ask. Harry apologized. He felt that Sha Ji must have experienced a lot of unspeakable pain in the past. In fact, he regretted it as soon as he finished asking. There's nothing you can't say Harry, you are all my friends, aren't you? Sha Ji said with a smile. When Harry and Hermione heard the word friend, and then heard that Sha Ji was willing to tell them the secret in his heart, they couldn't help feeling warm in their hearts, and then felt a strong sense of guilt. Harry was guilty, he shouldn't have asked, Hagrid had already told him that. It's okay, it sounds like it happened many years ago. Sha Ji smiled and continued, actually, these things only happened about two months ago. Harry, actually, Two months ago, I didn't know what the wizarding world was, nor did I know what magic was. Harry and Hermione's eyes widened in shock. In other words, Sha Ji only took less than two months to have the current strength. Harry's heart was full of excitement. After learning about Sha Ji's past, will he know the secret to his becoming stronger? If I can become stronger as quickly as him, then Voldemort must be made to pay the price he deserves. Sha Ji didn't speak, but stood up took off her shirt, revealing her thin upper body, and those dense scars. These scars are so ferocious, so terrible. It seems that every scar has a tragic story. Both Harry and Hermione were speechless from the shock of the scene. Seeing the shocked expressions of the two, Shaji put on her shirt again. These, Hermione is a girl after all, unlike Harry, her mind is more delicate. Shaji only said that two months ago, he didn't know what magic was. In other words, these scars have not healed for a long time, or in other words, they have just healed. What exactly did you go through? I want to say, it must have been terrible, otherwise, Hagrid wouldn't have told Harry not to ask you. Hermione's voice trembled. To be honest, those scars had a big impact on her. After all, she was still a child, and she grew up in a happy environment since she was a child, and she has never seen the darkness of the world. So did Harry. In fact, he always thought that being held down and beaten by Dudley's people was a miserable thing. But I didn't expect. Are you ready? What? Harry hadn't recovered yet. Of course it's a preparation to learn about my past. Harry and Hermione nodded, ready to listen. However, Sha Ji took out a somewhat worn out, shallow stone basin from his magic ring, with intricate runic symbols carved on the edge of the basin, and the basin contained a bright silver substance. Pensive. Money can turn ghosts around, this is what Sha Ji specially entrusted someone to buy for today. It is said that its former owner was a tomb robber. Its origin is self-evident. But this has nothing to do with Sha Ji. Sha Ji took out her wand, tapped it near her temple, and then slowly drew a trace of white mist from her temple. Harry and Hermione watched in amazement as Sha Ji threw the wisp of white air into the basin and stirred it with his wand. Then they saw a few human faces in the silver substance in the basin. Come on, come here, sink your face in. Harry and Hermione exchanged glances, then leaned on the side of the basin and put their faces into the basin. After just touching the bright silver liquid, Harry and Hermione found themselves planted in the pot. They panicked at first, but then they found themselves on the ground. Harry and Hermione looked around, this was not Harry's new bedroom anymore. Could this be a magic item with teleportation ability? Then they discovered that this was a cave, where miscellaneous things were piled up in a mess, and the most eye-catching thing was the iron cage among the sundries. Hermione soon noticed that there was a ragged boy in the iron cage, curled up in the cage with his head bowed. 
Um, hello, may I ask, where is this place? Harry's voice sounded hollow and reverberating as if echoing in a hall. But the boy acted like he didn't hear. Just when Harry and Hermione were about to go up to see the boy, a rush of footsteps came from behind them. Harry and Hermione turned quickly. They saw a thick-faced, middle-aged wizard walk in quickly, drawing his wand as he walked. Harry and Hermione were taken aback, this wizard didn't look like a nice guy. Just when they pulled out their wands, the middle-aged wizard had already walked past them, as if he didn't see them. Boy, I just researched an interesting little magic, let me try the effect on you. The boy in the cage trembled in vain, as if he had heard the most terrifying words in the world. The middle-aged wizard opened the cage door, pulled the boy's hair without mercy, and pulled him out. You, stop, Harry shouted angrily, but the wizard still dragged the boy far away as if he didn't hear him. Suddenly, Hermione grabbed Harry who was about to rush forward, and she said with a trembling voice, Harry, look at that boy. Harry looked over suspiciously, the boy's hair was being pulled just enough to expose his face. Shah Ji, that boy is Shah Ji. What's going on? I'm going to save him. Harry hurriedly wanted to rush up again. Harry, don't you understand? We are in Shah Ji's memory. Hermione finally understood now, didn't you notice? They didn't notice us at all. Yes, that's right, this is my memory. Shah Ji's gentle voice came from the ears of the two, and they turned around to see Shah Ji walking slowly. He looked at the boy whose hair was being pulled in the distance, feeling a little complicated. These are the recovered memories of the original owner. At that time, Shah Ji hadn't traveled over yet. What's going on here? Harry asked. This is the pensive, Harry. He can let people feel the memory of others. You can't touch everything here. Here, you can only be a bystander. At this time, the black wizard pointed at Sha Ji with his wand with a smirk. A black light instantly shot out from the tip of the magic wand and sank into Sha Ji's body. What? Sha Ji rolled on the ground in pain. But the middle aged wizard still didn't stop, and another curse was shot on Sha Ji. Sha Ji let out an inhuman scream. I have been tormented by him for a long time. Such scenes are repeated almost every day. Shah Ji's voice was very gentle, but it struck Harry and Hermione's hearts like a sledgehammer. Okay, let's go out. Shah Ji grabbed Harry and Hermione's arms. Harry and Hermione only felt that the scene in front of them changed, and their bodies became upside down again. When they came back together again, they were back in Harry's bright new bedroom. Hermione was already in tears, she couldn't help but give Shah Ji a hug. Chapter 51 Shah Ji patted Hermione's back tenderly, it's okay, Hermione, it's over. Shah Ji, who was the person involved, started to comfort Hermione instead. Harry was at a loss, I'm sorry, Shah Ji. Because of me, I reminded you of those, encounters. I show you this to prove that I have stepped out of the past, Shah Ji said. Harry, if it were you, what would you do after all this happened? Harry froze, if it was me. I would grit my teeth and hold on, just like you, and wait for rescue in the end. It must be Professor Dumbledore who saved you, right? Shah Ji asked calmly. Harry, do you think it was Professor Dumbledore who saved me? Ah, uh, I'm just guessing like this. I guess someone saved you. It's not like that, Harry. Shah Ji said in a deep voice, I was trapped in that cave for half a year, and I was subjected to inhuman torture every day. I persisted for half a year, and no one came to rescue me. Then, then how did you escape? Do you remember my silence? Harry nodded. Then Shah Ji told Harry and Hermione about her experience with Dumbledore. Harry, after I got out of trouble, I killed the wizard who tortured me without hesitation. Shah Ji said, Do you think I'm cruel? No, I don't think so. If you don't kill him, he will definitely not let you go, and he will definitely catch other children in the future. Harry said without thinking. Hermione also said, you definitely don't want to kill people, Shah Ji. However, you can't fight back when someone hurts you. In that case, you can only truly escape by killing him. Thank you for your approval. Shah Ji smiled, aren't you wondering why I became as strong as I am now? When I awakened and silently escaped successfully, I understood a truth. It's better for people to become strong themselves, and not always rely on others. Only when they have enough power, 
can they do many things that they couldn't do before. I know that wizard has many accomplices, and I don't want to be caught and tortured anymore, so I need to become stronger. At the same time, the hatred for them in my heart urges me to constantly tap my potential. At that time, I used the spells I learned from them to kill many of them in turn. And my strength was constantly improving, until that day, I met Professor Dumbledore. After learning about my situation, Professor Dumbledore and I, together with elite aurors from various countries, wiped out that group of evil wizards. Shaji didn't bring them into the pensive again, but simply told them what happened at that time in a few words. After hearing what happened to Shaji, Harry suddenly had an impulse in his heart, Shaji, I also want to become stronger, to be as strong as you. I don't want to just be protected by others. Similarly, I also don't lack for support. The hatred of Voldemort and his minions. I can do it too. So, Shaji, please teach me. In case Voldemort really comes back, I really need enough strength to do something. Harry said excitedly. Hermione also said. Shaji, I also want you to teach me to be strong, my parents are muggles. You told us about Voldemort's ideas. So, when the time comes, I don't want to be helpless force. So far, Shaji's two goals have been achieved. The reason why he showed his past in front of Harry and Hermione was to arouse their sympathy and then facilitate his persuasion later. First of all, he showed his memory of being tortured, and through the empathy between the two of them and himself, he successfully aroused their hatred for the werewolf wizard. Then, Shaji was miserable, saying that she would be tortured every day. Harry and Hermione felt the same way, and their hatred for the werewolf wizard was immediately upgraded. So, when Shaji told them next time that he would kill the werewolf wizard immediately after he got out of trouble, they all agreed. They also got a hint from this that when they are persecuted, it is impossible not to fight back. Even if they fight back, killing the opponent is acceptable. At this point, Shaji planted the seeds in their hearts that they could deal ruthless blows to the enemy at any time in the future. The first goal is achieved. Next, when Shaji said that his counterattack needs to be stimulated by hatred to become stronger. It is already hinting to them that if they want to take revenge quickly, they have to become stronger, and becoming stronger is not so easy. This hint in his heart had a particularly obvious effect on Harry. Because in his heart, he hated the murderer who killed his parents. When all the inner hints are in place, the result is that the two immediately strongly demand to become stronger. Harry wanted revenge urgently, while Hermione wanted to protect herself and her family after witnessing the darkness of this world in Shaji's memory, because Voldemort was only more ferocious and more powerful than those werewolf wizards, evil. Of course, this time, we can only plant seeds in their hearts. To cultivate them into decisive and powerful wizards, we need to continue to work hard in the future. Are you really sure you want me to teach you to become stronger? My training method is very hard. Can you hold on? I can, I can definitely, looking at the firm eyes of the two people in front of him. Shaji only felt that the jeep in her heart was ready to move. The next day, the three of them reunited in Harry's beautiful new bedroom. Just when Harry and Hermione thought Shaji was going to teach them a powerful spell, Shaji sat them down around a small table. If you want to learn to fight, you have to learn to be beaten first, but with your small physique, it may be too early to practice being beaten. So I decided to teach you a little healing spell today. Harry and Hermione looked at each other, but neither of them objected. After spending so many days together, they have already formed absolute trust in Sha Ji. The mantra, or you have seen it, is, healing as before. After having Harry and Hermione practice the tones of the spell and the wand gestures for a while, Sha Ji said, okay, now it's almost done, and we can really practice it. Just when Harry and Hermione were wondering what Shaji was going to give them to practice. I saw Shaji stretched out his left hand, and the magic wand with his right hand lightly stroked his left arm twice. Then two deep wounds appeared in front of Harry and Hermione bloody. No, Shaji, what are you doing? Hermione hurriedly stood up, trying to find something to bandage Shaji. Harry also looked at Shaji suspiciously, and was about to go out to find Aunt Petunia some bandages. Stop, Shaji's stern voice sounded, did you forget that you were wizards? Remember the magic spell I taught you just now? Come on, two wounds, each of you is responsible for one. 
If you don't heal my wound quickly, I may bleed to death. Whether I will die here is up to you. Sha Ji said to the two without changing his expression. Blood soon filled the entire small table. Harry and Hermione looked at each other, and both saw the panic and hesitation in the other's eyes. There was no other way, the two of them could only sit down quickly and cast a healing spell on Sha Ji's arm. Due to being too nervous and unskilled, both of them cast the healing spell several times before Sha Ji recovered from the wound on his hand, but there were still two shallow scars. Sha Ji looked down and shook her head dissatisfied. No, come again, Sha Ji said, tearing open the two freshly healed wounds again. Continue. Hermione suppressed the tears in her eyes, gritted her teeth and continued to cast the healing spell on Sha Ji. Don't shed tears easily at any time. Tears will blur your vision. In battle, such stupid behavior will cost you your life. Sha Ji's tone was still stern. Afterwards, Sha Ji opened the wound several times in succession, and asked them to continue the treatment. Harry and Hermione's proficiency in healing spells increased at a speed visible to the naked eye. This last time, Sha Ji didn't even see the scar on his arm. Very good, keep it up, Sha Ji picked up her wand, ready to continue. However, Harry held his arm firmly this time. He and Hermione looked at each other, then stretched out his arm, and with a cutting spell, he cut a wound on his arm. Hermione was in so much pain that she was about to cry again, but remembering what Sha Ji said before, she was not allowed to cry, so she gritted her teeth and endured it. Harry also gasped in pain, Sha Ji had been cutting his arm like this just now, didn't he feel any pain at all? A long time, Harry and Hermione also couldn't remember how many healing spells they had practiced. When the wound on the arm healed, it was cut again, over and over again. Their lips were all pale from blood loss. Okay, let's stop here today. Sha Ji's tone softened. He handed over two vials of potions, sent by Dumbledore, made by Snape. If Aunt Petunia broke into Harry's new bedroom at this time, she would think she was at the scene of some murder. Because the three children present were covered in blood. There was a large pool of blood on the floor. Of course, most of the blood was Sha Ji's, and when Harry and Hermione cut their own hands, they were not as cruel as Sha Ji. The wound wasn't that deep, so the bleeding wasn't as much as Sha Ji's. Sha Ji nodded secretly, the purpose of his visit today was not to teach the healing spell, how difficult can the healing spell be? There is no need to practice so many times. His ultimate goal is to exercise the psychological endurance of the two of them. Because only those who are ruthless to themselves can be even more ruthless when dealing with their enemies. Harry and Hermione drank the potion and felt much better. As I said yesterday, my training method is very hard. Today's training is just an appetizer. There will be more difficult training in the future. Are you sure you want to continue? Harry thought of his parents, and then said with firm eyes, I can still hold on. Compared to the injuries on your body, what I suffered today is nothing. I can too. Hermione's eyes were red, but she still insisted and refused to give up. Okay, I hope you don't regret it. Sha Ji shook her head with a look of helplessness. In fact, his heart had already blossomed with joy. Ha ha, this is easy to handle. Clean and new, Sha Ji waved her magic wand to clean up the blood on the ground and everyone's body. Then tomorrow, we'll see you here again. From that day on, they trained with Sha Ji almost every day. In addition to attacking spells, Sha Ji also took them to run and exercise. After all, apart from Sha Ji, the storage of magic power is directly linked to physical strength for other wizards. I have to say that Sha Ji's training is really heavy, whether it's psychological or physical. This kind of life that made Harry and Hermione miserable has passed for almost a month, and in the blink of an eye, it was the end of August. Hogwarts, school is finally about to start. Mom, how is Hogwarts divided into houses? This mother can't tell you, don't you think it's interesting to maintain a little sense of expectation? Well, mom, I should be sorted into Slytherin. Of course, your dad and I both graduated from Slytherin. Of course our baby should be sorted into Slytherin too. Didn't you always want to be in Slytherin? Mrs. Worley looked at Kashan Della, who was lying on the table in front of her, looking listless. What's wrong? What made my little princess unhappy? Kashan Della's tone was very low, which college will Sha Ji be assigned to? Mrs. Worley smiled and said, of course he will be assigned to Slytherin just like you. 
What Slytherin likes most is the talented little wizard. You should always know his talent. But I think he will definitely be assigned to Gryffindor. The more Kashan Della thought, the more depressed she became. Whether it's a werewolf or a dark wizard, he dares to charge up. I know, he must be a stupid lion. Right, mom, mom, can I choose the academy as I wish? Kashan Della. For more than a month, Kashan Della can only communicate with Shaji through letters. Kassan Della actually wanted to find Shaji, but after the last incident, the Whirlies were afraid to let Kassan Della go out. Kassan Della, Shaji is staying at the Leaky Cauldron now. Mrs. Whirly said to Kassian Della hesitantly. It was late at night, and Mrs. Wally had left. Kassan Della sat at the desk, stroking the ring worn on the ring finger of the right hand with her left hand. Kassan Della's name slowly lit up on the ring. Under the magic lamp, her eyes became brighter and brighter. Suddenly she stood up abruptly, and threw all the suitcases she had packed into the ring. Then, taking advantage of the darkness, he slipped out of the room. Two shadows stood in front of an attic window, quietly watching Kashandela who slipped out of the manor. Oh, Kassandela, Kaffi, protect miss. Dot dot dot, Shaji is making the ring, trying to use the alchemy he learned in the Whirly family library. The system task, in addition to training the savior and his companions to be ruthless, no, in addition to killing and resolute wizards, they also have to pull up an elite team comparable to elite wars. Shaji felt that such a team should also have its own logo. He thought Voldemort's Death Eater tattoos were stupid, functional and ugly. So he gave up this method immediately. Shaji thinks the ring is good, and he added the functions of identifying the owner, contacting, storing and so on in the ring and other functions can be added in the future. Each member who has a ring can change the shape of the ring according to his own wishes, and only the owner of the ring can wear the ring. It is beautiful and functional without being obtrusive. With the ring on Shaji's hand, she finally reached the final step. He engraved the letters, D.A., on the ring. Yes, he was going to call the Team Dumbledore's army, the one Harry formed in the books. He established this association in advance. There are two major advantages to doing this. First, it pulls the banner of Dumbledore, and the cohesion of the members will be further improved in the future. Second, if Dumbledore really found out, he would be able to quibble, no, it would be easy to explain. Currently, there are only Shaji, Harry and Hermione in DA. When Shaji proposed this, both Harry and Hermione excitedly agreed. No way, after Shaji's long-term publicity, they have already become fans of Dumbledore. So Shaji told them that this organization needs to be kept secret, and only those young wizards who have really passed the test can know and join DA. Special reminder, never let Dumbledore know. Anyway, Dumbledore generally didn't use legilimency on little wizards, and even if he did, he would do a superficial detection to see if the other party was lying. After all, he is different from a socket genius. When I really found out, I insisted that this is the study group I set up. Shaji looked carefully at the completed ring in her hand. This ring is somewhat similar to the Supreme Lord of the Rings, but it is silver. There are only two letters, D.A., on the outer circle of the ring, while Hermione's name is on the inner circle of the ring. Shaji held the ring in her hand, and with a thought, the ring changed into another shape. Then Shaji touched the ring lightly, and the ring disappeared in his hand. That's right, this ring also has an invisibility function. In case, the team goes underground in the future, then this stealth function will be very useful. He thought to himself, contact Harry, and then the ring on his finger started to warm slightly. On the other side, Harry's ring, which had already been finished, also began to heat up gradually, and Hermione's name appeared on it. Shaji nodded, this is the most preliminary contact function, it is still very rough, like a pager, you can only know who is looking for you, without knowing what information it is. But Shaji will definitely improve this feature in the future. Shaji was going to send the ring and the instruction manual to Harry and the others after Shao Shuecho came back. He stretched himself, ready to check his luggage, after all, tomorrow is September 1st. Suddenly, there was a knock on his door. Shaji frowned slightly, he told Tom not to disturb himself tonight. He picked up his wand, hid it behind his back, and carefully opened the door. Then he saw a pretty little girl with blonde hair and green eyes standing at the door. Kassan Della, 
Why are you here? The corners of Kashan Della's mouth raised slightly, what's the matter? Don't you think it's rude to leave me outside the door? Um, excuse me, please come in. Shaji scratched her head, not understanding how Cassandella came here. Cassandella, you should stay at the manor. After all, there are still people out there who want to use you against your father. With a smug smile, Kashan Della passed Shaji graciously and walked into his room. Then her smile faded as she saw the ring on the table. From that exquisite ring, she vaguely saw the name, Hermione Granger. HMPH, of course you don't want me to come to you. After all, you meet new friends, how can you remember old friends? She pursed her lips and picked up the ring. Hermione Granger, HMPH, judging by the name, she's still a girl. As soon as Shaji heard her tone, she knew she was angry. Don't get me wrong, that's the ring I made for the members of the association I just formed, it's just a sign. Shaji picked up Harry's ring and handed it to Kashan Della, look, this is the ring I made for Harry Ring. I should have mentioned him in my letter to you, it was Harry Potter. Of course, of course you mentioned Harry Potter, but, dot you never mentioned Hermione Granger to me. Ah this, dot dot dot. It took Shaji a lot of time to coax Cashandella well. So, what do you want to do by forming an association all of a sudden? Kashan Della stared at Shaji with her green eyes. Um, it's just a study group. Shaji replied, Cassandella's pupils were a very dark emerald green, darker than Harry's eyes, Shaji thought it must be because of this reason that he will feel oppression from Kashan Della. You fought that dark wizard in Gringotts, and then you started to form an organization. Just an association, of a learning nature. Isn't it because you want to fight against the mysterious person in the future, so you set up an organization? Kashan Della looked at Shaji quietly, and she had to say that she was really smart. Kazan Della, you, Shaji really wanted to ask, how did Cassian Della know that Voldemort was coming back? You know, in the current wizarding world, except for Dumbledore and others, everyone thinks that Voldemort is dead. Never would have thought that Voldemort would make a comeback, but now Kashan Della said so. My dad has always said that only those fools who are happy to be safe will think that the mysterious man is really dead. Kashan Della sighed, so, I guessed right, you set up an organization to fight against the mysterious man in the future. Shaji wanted to say no, it was just a task of the system, but she couldn't tell Kashan Della what the system was. So he had no choice but to acquiesce, and then waited for Kashan Della to scold him for being an idiot, scolding him for not knowing how to cherish his own life, scolding him for rushing forward even though he knew the danger. But he waited for a long time, and Kashan Della didn't scold him. Kassan Della just looked at him and said calmly, well, I want to join too. Ha, huh. Shaji looked at Kashan Della in surprise, not understanding why she made such a decision. Wasn't she always a typical Slytherin? It is her usual practice to make a decision before acting. Shouldn't she despise her reckless actions as usual? What's going on today? This Kashan Della could not have been transformed by someone else using compound soup. Shaji suddenly had the urge to give her a revealing spell, but he stopped when he saw the ring on Kashan Della's hand. The crisis alert was not triggered, and the ring on her hand locked Kashan Della's magic power, and only Kashan Della could wear it. He didn't know that some things had gradually changed. The former Kashan Della would never risk running out to find him, no matter how close she was. When she decided to take the salute and venture out of the manor to find him, everything had already changed. Dot dot dot. Shaji finally agreed to Kashan Della's membership application and modified her ring, adding all the functions of DA Ring. Originally, Shaji just wanted to make her a new one, but she insisted on using the original ring. In the end, Shaji opened another room for Cassandella to rest under Tom's eyes that hated iron and steel. Shaji really wanted to beat Tom, an old man, what was he thinking? Kashan Della is not yet an adult. Is it my beast or your beast? After finally persuading Kashan Della to go to bed, Shaji just borrowed two owls from Tom, and then sent a letter to Mr. Worley, saying that Kashan Della is safe with her, so they can feel at ease. Afterwards, Shaji sent Harry and Hermione's rings to them with a borrowed owl and a little snowball. And also explained in the letter that his good friend Cassandella joined the DA, and told them that they will be introduced to each other tomorrow on the Hogwarts Express. Then Shaji took a rough wash and lay down to sleep. 
Dot, dot, dot. Worley's estate. Mr. Wally put down the letter in his hand and went out. Where are you going? Mrs. Wally asked suspiciously. Of course I went to Cassandella. Shaji told me not to worry, but now I'm more worried. Knock, don't you still believe in Shaji's ability? With him here, we don't have to worry. No, Elena, it's him I'm worried about. Mr. Wally said quietly. You, you have to have some faith in Cassandella, our daughter is not a random person. So, you are not allowed to go anywhere. Because I stayed up late last night to tell Cassandella some ideas about Dumbledore's army, and then helped her transform the ring. So when Shaji woke up, it was already 10 o'clock. Oh my god, Shaji quickly got up, the Hogwarts Express left on time at 11 o'clock. He's going to be late. He hurried to the next room and knocked on Kashan Della's door. Of course Cassie Della didn't wake up so early. When she was at home, she was the eldest lady, the kind who sleeps until she wakes up naturally, and she has the habit of sleeping late. In addition to running to find Shaji in the middle of the night last night, I was already tired, and it was already late when I took a rest. So she just woke up. By the time she got dressed slowly and finished washing, it was almost half past ten. On the other hand, Shaji had been waiting impatiently for a long time. Although he could get to Hogwarts without taking the train, he didn't want to miss the Hogwarts Express. He would have liked to see Platform 9 and 3 quarters, and he would have liked to see the Hogwarts Express. Because of the storage ring, neither of them took any luggage. Shaji dragged Kashan Dell out of the leaky cauldron, then hailed a taxi and rushed to King's Cross Station. No way, Shaji has never been to the station, so there is no way to operate. Along the way, the taxi driver was a little puzzled, why his car suddenly ran so fast. Kashan Della was the complete opposite of Shaji's anxiety. She sat curiously in the car and kept looking out the window at the street. She really hadn't been around the Muggle streets much. Fortunately, the taxi driver's driving skills are excellent, and he arrived at King's Cross Station in just over 20 minutes. Shaji and Kashan Della got out of the car, and quietly cancelled the magic cast on the taxi. By the time they found platform 9 and 3 quarters, it was already 10.55, and there was no one around. But when they passed through the wall, the scene in front of them suddenly became lively. The liveliness on the platform was no less than that of Diagon Alley during the day. Many parents are standing here, ready to send off their children. Shaji saw the Wallies here. Mr. Wally is not very energetic, as if he did not sleep well last night. When he saw Cassandella, he trotted over quickly, pulled Cassandella and looked up and down, left and right, as if to check if Cassandella was missing any parts. Mrs. Wally breathed a sigh of relief, I thought you were going to be late. Cassandella lowered her head slightly in front of Mrs. Worley, after all, I sneaked out of the manor last night. She thought her mother would teach her a few words. But Mrs. Worley didn't say much, but urged the two to get in the car quickly, it's getting late, get in the car quickly, and remember to write a letter to mom. Kashan Della seemed to see the smile in her mother's eyes, and then she laughed too. After getting into the car, Shaji saw Harry and Hermione waving to them at the door of a carriage. They had already seen Shaji and Kashan Della from the car window just now, so they specially greeted them at the door. Shaji took Kashan Della to Harry's carriage. In the carriage, apart from Harry and Hermione, there was also a little boy with fiery red hair and freckles on his face, and there was a little stain on his nose. In his hand, there is also a big chubby mouse. Shaji recognized Ron Weasley at the first glance. It seems that because of his lateness, Harry, who did not set off with him, still met the Weasley family. Kassan Della, these two are the Harry Potter and Hermione Granger I told you about before. Both are my friends. Shaji introduced them as soon as he entered the door. You didn't mention Hermione Granger to me. Kashan Della whispered. Shaji's hearing is very sensitive, and after hearing what Kashan Della said, she couldn't help but blush. Ahem, Harry, Hermione. This is the Cassian Della Whirly I mentioned to you, she was my first friend. Kassan Della shook hands with the two reservedly and exchanged a few pleasantries. Shaji was very surprised at the side, hiss, something is wrong. At this time, shouldn't Cassandella be snarky? Where's your poisonous tongue? He has long been prepared for Cassandella's criticism. After all, Cassandella treats everyone except him with a superior attitude. 
In the game plot, Kashan Della is still a villain, and she will never forget to say a few words of condescension. But what happened to the harmonious picture that appeared in front of him now, something was wrong. Kassan Della greeted Harry and Hermione politely. The delicate and polite Kassan Della quickly gained the favor of Harry and Hermione. Harry then introduced Ron Weasley to Shaji and Kassan Della. Ron looked at Kassan Della in surprise, is that the mysterious Whirly family? Your family is famous. My dad said the Whirly family is amazing. Kassan Della responded politely. I've heard of the Weasley family, and you are also amazing, especially during the reign of the mysterious man, you made great contributions. Ron suddenly became happy, a noble pure blood wizard, actually praised the Weasley family. You know, ordinary pure blood families sneer at the Weasley family. But Shah Ji was puzzled at the side, how could this Kashan Della not have a vicious tongue at all? Although Kashan Della liked this is really cute. Shah Ji originally thought that with her character, she would have to mock the Weasley family, just like Malfoy. Kashan Della looked at Shaji's surprised eyes beside her, and the corners of her mouth raised slightly. Hiss. She laughed. She really has a conspiracy. I have to say that Kashan Della is so dazzling no matter where she goes. Her elegant speech and delicate and beautiful face make her the focus of the audience no matter where she is. She quickly became familiar with Harry and the others. I have to say that a person with a sharp tongue, once he stops being sharp, speaks really nicely. Since she can say something that breaks your defense, it is naturally because she can easily see what you care about. So, when Kashan Della gave up her poisonous tongue and began to cater to Harry and the others. Harry and the others suddenly felt that Kashan Della was good-looking, nice-sounding, and polite, and they really liked her very much. Miss Cassian Della is so nice. It was great to befriend her. Although Shaji didn't know why Kashan Della had such a big change. However, this Kashan Della is really much cuter than before, at least a lot more frank. At this time, a smiling witch pushed a trolley full of various snacks and knocked on the door of the carriage. Shaji stood up, bought a lot of snacks and carried them in. Everyone chatted while eating, and for a while, the carriage was full of joy. Suddenly, Harry asked Kashan Della. I always thought your voice was very familiar, I finally remembered it just now. Did you send a roaring letter to Shah Ji? PFF. Shah Ji was drinking pumpkin juice, and when she heard this, she squirted out a mouthful of pumpkin juice, pouring chills on Harry who was opposite him, and his heart flew up. Shah Ji really wants to give Harry a fuchsia now, which pot can't be opened and which pot can be lifted. At that time, my reply letter asking Kashan Della to die with me made Kashan Della not send me another letter for a week. Kashan Della felt a little uneasy when she thought about the yelling letter she sent impulsively. She raised her wand and cleaned the pumpkin juice off Harry, but her expression seemed calm. Yes, it was the roaring letter I sent him. He has always been quite worrying. My God, I was left alone to fight the Black Wizard. I was so worried at the time. Speaking of this, Kashan Della looked he glanced at Hermione, as if asserting sovereignty. But now that Hermione has seen Shah Ji's level, she no longer has the haughty attitude at the beginning of the original book. Yeah, I can't believe it. Hermione also echoed, but she sensitively saw a hint of hostility in Kashan Della's eyes, and she didn't know why. Harry, I advise you to take out your potions textbook and study hard now. Otherwise, bad things will happen to you when school starts. Shaji said with a sullen face. If you can't speak, you can shut up and read. Cassandella also said earnestly. Harry, I think you should listen to Shaji's words and preview the potions textbook carefully. What he said is usually very effective. Kashan Della knew that Shaji only had some prophecy talents, and Shaji told her about it, but she also knew that it was best not to tell about it, so she didn't even tell her parents. Harry frowned and took out his potions textbook but this potions textbook was really boring, why did Shaji have to read it by himself? Hermione said, Harry, there's nothing wrong with previewing the textbook in advance, I've memorized everything in the textbook. Ron was stunned by Hermione's words. Instead of going to play during the holiday, he actually endorsed at home. What a ruthless person. At this time, the carriage door was suddenly pulled open. A boy with blonde hair and a pale face walked into the carriage, and behind him were two tall boys who were like his bodyguards. Shaji recognized him at a glance, it was Delico Malfoy. As soon as Malfoy came in, 
he saw Cassandella, and his eyes lit up. But he didn't talk to Cassandella, but looked at Harry, I heard that Harry Potter is in this compartment. So, it's you, right? These were the only people in the car, Shaji had black hair and black pupils, with an Asian face. Ron's red hair had given away who he was. So, he recognized Harry right away. Harry nodded, because of Shaji, they hadn't met in Madame Malkin's robe shop before. Harry nodded, admitting that he was Harry Potter. This is Crab, and this is Goyle. My name is Delico Malfoy. He introduced himself and the two followers behind him. He glanced at the red-haired Ron, and Shaji who was sitting next to Kashan Della. Actually, some wizarding families are much nicer than others, Potter. He held out his hand. You don't want to befriend the odd kind of people, do you? I can help you with that. I think I can tell who is different, thank you. Same as the original book, Harry finds this boy very annoying, he actually said his friends are different. So Harry didn't shake his hand at all. Cassandella suddenly said, Malfoy, so you think I'm a different kind of person? Malfoy's cheeks, which had been blushing slightly from the rejection, suddenly flushed. Of course I'm not talking about you, Miss Wally. In fact, I just want to invite Miss Wally to sit in my carriage. My father said that the Wally family is a wizard family with very noble blood. So, we should be friends. I'm sorry, but I don't want to make friends with such an unmannered and inelegant person. Hearing Cassandella's words, Ron coughed lightly to keep from laughing out loud. Malfoy, who was rejected again, came up angrily, do you think it's funny? My dad told me that everyone in the Weasley family has red hair, freckles, and too many children to support. You are Weasley home. Ron flushed with anger. Malfoy turned his head again, and said slowly to Cassandella, has the Wally family fallen too, to make friends with these lowly mudbloods like the Weasley family? As he spoke, Malfoy glanced at Shaji and Hermione. Obviously, before he came, he already knew some information about this carriage. Shaji and Hermione are both mudbloods in Malfoy's mouth. Ding, the greatest black, white wizard must not be humiliated. Throw Malfoy out of the car and reward him with two skill points. Shaji originally planned to teach Malfoy a lesson, but when he heard that the system that had been offline for a long time suddenly sent a mission, he naturally would not refuse. Kashan Della's face changed when she heard Malfoy's words. But before she could raise her wand, a figure beside her rushed up. Bump, bump, bump. Ah, ah, Shaji didn't even use his magic wand, and directly pushed the three people opposite him to the ground with a hammer. If you dare to say the word, Mudblood, again in the future, I will immediately turn you into maggots in a cesspit. Shaji said every single word. The three of Malfoy were bruised and swollen by Shaji. Of course, this was the result of Shaji keeping his hands. Otherwise, with Shaji's plus 10 strength, they would be able to hang them on the wall with one punch. You are finished, I will definitely tell my father, my father is the school manager. He will find a way to expel you. Malfoy was terrified but he still threatened Shaji with a firm mouth. Bump, what, didn't you read the newspaper? My teacher is still Headmaster Dumbledore. Are you fighting against Shaji? Do you have the strength? Shaji picked up the three of them like trash, and threw them out one by one. He closed the compartment door, then turned around and patted the non-existent dust on his hands. Cool, Ron looked at Shaji adoringly. Everyone looked at him in amazement, they didn't expect his strength to be so great. Shaji only glanced at the people in the carriage, and then said to Hermione, Ahem, Hermione, if someone says this word in front of you in the future, don't hesitate to give him a punch. Ding, the task is complete, congratulations to the host for obtaining two skill points. Shaji opened the panel and looked at it. I found that I actually had three skill points. Dot dot dot, remaining skill points, three. Curse, Avada Kedavra Curse Level 9, Full Level. Improved Fierce Fire Curse Level 9, Full Level. Item. None. Talent. Obscure. Parcel Tongue, the highest level, Crisis Alertness. Black Magic Mastery. 9. Transfiguration Mastery. 5. Prophecy Mastery. 3. Potion Mastery. 0. Alchemy Mastery. 2. Dot dot dot. Expand. Dot dot dot. Shaji was hesitating whether to add these three points to the potion, or continue to add them to the divination. Because in Whirly's library, 
Although he read some books on potions, he never tried it himself. So potions mastery is always zero. After Sha Ji thought about the appearance of that old bat, he immediately threw all three points of potion mastery into potion mastery. He didn't want to be stared at the back of his head by the old bat, spraying venom at will. After the three of Malfoy were thrown out, they never dared to come over to find fault. Nothing special happened on the subsequent journey. Except in between, there was a boy with a round face crying and knocking on the door, asking if they had seen a toad. After Sha Ji found out his toad's name was Lai Fu, he used the flying curse to bring back the toad who loved to escape from prison. Unexpectedly, the toad was hiding in the round-faced boy's coat pocket. Although the flying curse is not very effective on living creatures, but in terms of Sha Ji's magic power, it is really a simple matter. The round-faced boy said his name was Neville Longbottom. Then he grabbed his toad and went away gratefully. Harry didn't read the potions textbook after all, he and Ron had a lively chat about Quidditch. Because there is an extra Ron, everyone didn't mention DA. This is Sha Ji's rigid requirement. The recruitment of DA members can only be done by Sha Ji alone. If other members have suitable candidates, they can only report to Sha Ji, and then Sha Ji will contact them personally. There is no way, the early stage of the organization's development must be kept strictly confidential. It was gradually getting dark, and under the deep purple sky, there were mountains and forests. Sha Ji noticed that the speed of the train began to slow down. He knew it was coming soon. Harry was so nervous that his stomach hurt a little. Sha Ji also felt excited, he was going to see the magical castle for real soon. Because it was almost here, Sha Ji knew that they had changed into black robes. In five minutes, the train will arrive at Hogwarts. Please leave your luggage on the train, and we will send you to school. The sound echoed on the train. Sha Ji's luggage was all in his ring, he hesitated for a moment, but took out a suitcase and left it in the car. They packed up whatever snacks were left on the table. The train came to a slow stop, and people flocked to the doors. Sha Ji was not in a hurry, and waited with Kashandela for everyone to get off before getting out of the car. The weather is so cold at night. Harry shivered from the cold. Sha Ji didn't care at all, he was in good health now, so the coldness was nothing. First year students, first year students, come here. A lamp flickered above the students' heads. Hagrid, Harry yelled excitedly. Oh, Harry, come here, are you okay? Hagrid's tall figure stood beside many students, not to mention how eye-catching it was. Oh, and Sha Ji, long time no see. Come on, first year freshmen, watch your step and watch the road. A group of freshmen followed Hagrid down a narrow path, turned a corner, and then they all let out a sound of wonder. In front of him was a black lake, and on the hillside on the other side of the lake stood a majestic castle. Sha Ji happily looked at the castle in front of her, and finally saw the real one, which is not a bad feeling. The crowd followed Hagrid's figure down to the lake, and then in groups of four, they boarded small boats. Sha Ji, Cassandella, Harry and Hermione boarded a boat, and Ron boarded a boat with Neville. The boat slowly crossed the Black Lake, and Hagrid brought the little wizards to the gate of the castle. He raised his fist the size of a casserole and knocked on the gate of the castle. The door was opened immediately, and Professor McGonagall stood in front of the door in emerald green robes, her expression was serious, but when her eyes swept over Sha Ji's figure, the corners of her mouth were slightly raised. Sha Ji nodded slightly to her. Freshman, Professor McGonagall. Thank you, Hagrid, and leave it to me. Professor McGonagall led them into a small room. Everyone stood shoulder to shoulder. Welcome to Hogwarts. I hope that no matter which house you are assigned to, you can win glory for the house. While it is now, you should clean up yourselves and be more energetic. I will pick you up when the other side is ready. Please keep quiet while you wait. When Harry asked Ron how they were sorted, Ron told Harry sourly that they might have to fight a troll later, which was what his big brother Fred told him. After hearing this, Harry grasped the wand in his robes tightly. He didn't feel afraid in his heart, and even felt excited. After Sha Ji's training, the current Harry is much stronger than the original Harry, who doesn't understand anything yet. But now, after Sha Ji's training, Harry has been able to master spells such as Disarming Spell, Stun Spell, and Explosive Spell well. Now Harry's strength is actually pretty good. 
Of course, Shaji forbade Harry to use those devastating spells in school. But if the opponent is a troll, it should be fine if I use a slightly stronger spell, Harry thought. Hermione was now reciting the spell she had learned from Shaji, and her hand holding the wand was sweating from tension. At this time, the ghosts of Hogwarts appeared. Their milky white bodies suddenly passed through the wall and appeared in front of the little wizards, scaring many people to scream. Shaji curiously ran his hand through the body of a ghost dressed as a monk, and he felt as if his hand had been plunged into icy water. Shaji has always thought that the ghosts of Hogwarts are very magical, and he plans to study them carefully in the future. The sorting ceremony is about to begin, please move forward. Now, line up in a single file and follow me. When Shaji walked forward, she suddenly felt her hand being held by a cold little hand. Shaji looked back, and it turned out that it was Kashan Della who grabbed his hand. It was just Kashan Della who was always calm, but now her face was pale. She seemed very nervous. Shaji thought she was worried about the upcoming sorting ceremony, so she comforted her, it's okay, the sorting ceremony is not scary at all. Kashan Della glanced at him, hesitated to speak, then silently let go of her hand, and followed Shaji into the auditorium. In the luxurious auditorium, students from other grades of the four colleges were already sitting around four long tables. Above the tables, thousands of candles floated in midair, illuminating the auditorium thoroughly. On the stage at the top of the auditorium, there is another long table. That's where teachers sit. Shaji looked up, and he soon spotted Corel, still wearing that ridiculously large turban. It's just that his face was terribly pale. He also saw Shaji, but his eyes just swept across Shaji's body without stopping. Shaji smiled slightly, the taste of Lihuo should be very unpleasant. At this time, Professor McGonagall brought in all the first-year students. Then let them come to the front of the classroom seats and stand in a row facing all the senior students. Professor McGonagall placed a four-legged stool in front of the new students, and then placed a dirty pointed wizard hat on the stool. The hat was dirty and worn out, as if it hadn't been washed in hundreds of years. The hat suddenly twisted, and then a wide slit opened in the front, opened like a mouth, and began to sing. You may think I'm not pretty, but don't judge a book by its cover. Dot dot dot. After the sorting hat finished singing, Harry finally understood that he seemed to be able to complete the sorting as long as he put on that hat. There was no need to duel the troll, much to Harry's disappointment. He regrettably had to let go of his wand hidden in his robes. Professor McGonagall stepped forward, holding a long scroll of parchment. Whoever's name I read now, put on the hat, sit on the stool, and wait for the sorting. She glanced at the parchment. Hannah Abbott, a little girl with two golden braids staggered up, put on her hat, and sat down. After a while, Hufflepuff, shouted the hat, Hannah Abbott put down her hat and walked towards the long table cheering. Susan Bones, dot dot dot, the sorting ceremony was going on, and Shaji found that Kashan Della beside her was touching her shoulder, trembling slightly. He turned his head and saw Cassandella's pale cheeks. He stretched out his hand and quietly grabbed her cold little hand and squeezed it gently. Kashan Della looked over and saw Shaji's warm smile. At this moment, she no longer felt entangled or hesitant in her heart. She seems to have made a very important decision. The sorting ceremony is still going on. Hermione was assigned to Gryffindor as in the original book. When it was Harry's turn, the sorting hat paused for a while. Shaji thought he was talking to the sorting hat. Interestingly though, even though Ron hadn't said anything bad about Slytherin to him, Harry was still sorted into Gryffindor. For a moment, the long table of Gryffindor boiled. We've got Potter. A pair of red-haired twins jumped to their feet, shouting in unison. On the classroom table, Dumbledore clapped his hands lightly with a broad smile on his face. Shaji felt that the old man was eccentric, and he didn't clap hands when the other young wizards were sorted. As for the next Ron, he was naturally assigned to Gryffindor just like his big brothers. When the sorting hat called Gryffindor, Ron was greatly relieved. If he was sorted into Slytherin, he felt that he would not even be able to return home. Dot dot dot, Cassandella Whirly. Finally, after finishing several little wizards sorting, it's Cassandella's turn. Shaji let go of her little hand, and Cassandella stepped forward. Suddenly, she turned around and smiled at him, and then put on the sorting hat. 
Sha Ji only knew that she would definitely be assigned to Slytherin. It was described in the game introduction before, when the sorting hat first touched her head, it immediately called out Slytherin. But soon, Sha Ji realized something was wrong, because she had been wearing the sorting hat for too long. One minute passed, two minutes passed. The people in the auditorium all started talking. Sha Ji looked at the back of Kashan Della sitting on the stool in bewilderment. Finally, after five full minutes had passed, the sorting hat sounded again. Well, well, since you insist. Gryffindor. Ah, where? Sha Ji almost staggered and sat on the ground. It's not. Cassandella went to Gryffindor. Sha Ji suddenly felt a sense of absurdity. Just like Harry Potter went to Slytherin, Della Malfoy went to Hufflepuff. Kashan Della put down her hat, then smiled sweetly at Sha Ji, and then ran to the long table of Gryffindor who was welcoming her. Sha Ji suddenly understood the meaning of her smile. It turned out that she always knew, she knew where she would definitely choose. He thought of the lovely Kashan Della on the train, and the Kashan Della who was willing to take the risk to sneak out of the manor to find him, the Kashan Della who tried hard to change himself. For you, I turned into a lion. He looked over to Cassandella sitting next to Hermione at the Gryffindor table. She was looking towards her side, her lips opened and closed, as if she was saying something softly. But Sha Ji still read her lips clearly. Wherever you go, I will go. Sha Ji secretly sighed, silly girl. Dot dot dot. Sha Ji. Sha Ji was stunned for a long time before looking up, and then he saw Professor McGonagall's meaningful smile. Mr. Sha Ji, it's your turn. Um, I'm sorry, Professor. Sha Ji apologized, then picked up the hat, and put it on her head after a while. The shock that Kashan Della brought to him just now caused slight ripples in his full-level occlumency. The sorting hat looks a little too big. As soon as Sha Ji put it on, the brim of the hat slid down, almost covering his eyes. As soon as he put his hat on firmly, he found a faint consciousness swept over his head, and read the memory he had forged with occlumency. Oh, tragic, but very brave. Oh, after getting out of trouble, bravely trying to save others. Ah, I have never seen anyone as brave as you. Oh, brave and talented. See you, as if seeing Gryffindor himself. Well, since you yourself have such a will, then I understand where you should go. The shrill voice of the sorting hat kept ringing in Sha Ji's mind. Sha Ji suddenly asked, Dear Mr. Sorting Hat, can I ask you a question? Oh, of course, polite little wizard. Of course I know what you want to ask, what did you want to ask that girl just told me? Well, there's nothing I can't tell you. Speaking of it, it may have something to do with you. She really knows you very well. He knows that you are suitable for Gryffindor, and then she also wants to go to Gryffindor. Actually, maybe Slytherin might be more suitable for her, but since she strongly requested it, the Sorting Hat also respects the wishes of the little wizard. Dot dot dot. Professor McGonagall on the side saw Sha Ji with her eyes closed, having a heated chat with the sorting hat, and couldn't help coughing. She is eager to know which academy Sha Ji will end up being sorted into. After seeing Sha Ji's wonderful transfiguration, she very much hoped that Sha Ji would be assigned to Gryffindor. Okay, okay, although I am very happy chatting with you, others should be anxious. But you must not forget that you said you would help me take a bath. My god, it has been thousands of years, and no one remembers give me a bath. Well, then it's a deal. Gryffindor, the sorting hat shouted. The young wizards on the long table in Gryffindor cheered to welcome Sha Ji. Because of being in the newspaper before, Sha Ji's reputation is not small now. Sha Ji returned the sorting hat to Professor McGonagall. Professor McGonagall, who had a serious face just now, could no longer hide the smile on the corner of his mouth. Sha Ji just looked towards the stage, where Dumbledore was smiling and applauding himself. Sha Ji smiled and nodded at Dumbledore, before running to Gryffindor's long table. Harry grabbed Sha Ji excitedly and pulled him to sit next to Castella. Fred and George appeared behind Sha Ji at the same time, the newspaper says you are a direct student of Professor Dumbledore, is that true? Sha Ji looked at the red-haired boy who didn't know whether it was Fred or George, in fact, as long as he studied at Hogwarts, he was a direct student of Professor Dumbledore. Oh, come on. Dot you sound like Percy. Dot dot dot. Sha Ji looked at Kashan Della on the side, 
She was blushing now, secretly looking at Sha Ji. Sha Ji ruffled her neat blonde hair and messed it up. Then he whispered in her ear, Silly girl, in fact, no matter what you become, I still like you. Then Cassandella's ears turned red. Dot dot dot. Dumbledore understood everyone's mood very well, stood up without saying a few words, and started the meal officially. The rectangular table is filled with all kinds of delicacies in an instant. Ron picked up a drumstick in one hand and stuffed his mouth full. It was already night and he was already hungry. Shaji was surprised to find that there was a small pot of hot pot in front of her. Then he looked towards the podium and saw Dumbledore winking at him. Well, when we were having dinner together at the Leaky Cauldron, the owner of the bar, Tom, mentioned that Shaji likes hot pot best. Unexpectedly, Dumbledore kept remembering. I have to say that the house elves at Hogwarts are not bad at their craftsmanship. The soup base of this mutton clear soup is very mellow, even for Shaji who is picky, he thinks it is quite good. When people around discovered the hot pot in front of Shaji, Shaji introduced it to them. This is much better than baked potatoes, looking up at the stars and so on. Hey, Harry suddenly cried out in pain while clutching his scar. Percy next to him quickly asked, what's wrong? Shaji looked towards the teacher's table, and then saw Quirrell, who had his back to Harry, talking to Snape. Shaji knew that Harry's brain hurt because of the stimulation of the noseless one on the back of Quirrell's head. He secretly thought about how to kill this noseless one. Finally, after dessert too, the dinner party was finally over. Dumbledore stood up. Now that everyone is full, I want to say a few words to everyone. Attention first-year freshmen, the Forbidden Forest strictly prohibits any students from entering. Of course, not only first-year freshmen, some of our senior students should also remember this. Finally, I must tell everyone that those who do not want to encounter accidents and die in pain, please do not enter the corridor on the right side of the fourth floor. Shaji heard Harry asking Percy from the side, he couldn't be telling the truth. Shaji knew that Dumbledore must have sensed that Voldemort was playing with the Philosopher's Stone, knowing that Gringotts was no longer safe, so he took the Philosopher's Stone away in advance and kept it in his own hands. Shaji is sure that the so-called level-breaking game on the fourth floor is just a trap for Quirrell. In the original book, the Mirror of Arised with the Sorcerer's Stone hidden on it was also put into the end of the game in the later stage. Of course, Shaji would not foolishly think that things will continue to develop according to the original plot. I have to do something, because since I fought Quirrell in Gringotts, I have officially joined the plot. It is impossible for subsequent developments to follow the original book 100%. Voldemort already knew of his existence, so he might take action against him. After all, his own strength has been demonstrated in front of their eyes, so they can't help but pay attention to it. Shaji believed that Quirrell and Voldemort must have heard that he was Dumbledore's direct disciple. Whether it was true or not, at the very least, in the eyes of Quirrell and Voldemort, Shaji had already been branded as Dumbledore's faction. By this time the dinner party was over, and Dumbledore was proposing that everyone sing the school song before going to sleep. The smiles of the professors froze. Many senior students also had uncomfortable expressions. Dumbledore took out his wand and waved it lightly, and the words of the Hogwarts school song suddenly appeared in the void. Everyone can sing to whatever tune they like. He waved his wand happily, as if conducting a choir. Then he looked at everyone in the auditorium expectantly. Well, the shady matter can be put aside for now, and Lao Deng still has to give face. So Sha Ji took the lead in singing with the melody of the funeral march. Hogwarts Fred and George's eyes lit up immediately when they heard it, and they clasped Shaji's shoulders from left to right, and sang excitedly with him in the same tone. At this time, singing with different tones sounded in the auditorium. Miscellaneous. When everyone finished singing piecemeal, Shaji and Shuangzi were still singing the last part with a slow melody. Dumbledore happily conducted the last bit for them. Shaji and Gemini's tricks made Harry and the others laugh until they fell down. Dumbledore sighed. Ah, music is always moving. Fred patted Sha Ji on the shoulder, oh, what a great idea to sing the school song to the tune of a funeral march. George said, actually, we thought so just now. Fred said, when I heard you talk, I thought it was another Percy. But I didn't expect you to be interesting. Percy frowned on the side, Sha Ji is just a good boy, don't spoil him. 
He was a little annoyed. Originally he wanted to come over and ask Sha Ji how he met Dumbledore, because this experience might help him in his future career planning. George. Oh, who's Percy? Fred. Of course it's a prefect. George laughed. It's only a fool who is a prefect. Percy was furious with his two younger brothers. Sha Ji, you must not be like them, they are my younger brothers who always violate the school rules. Sha Ji thought to himself, is it still Gryffindor if it doesn't violate the school rules? But he still pretended to be perfunctory on the surface. Sha Ji deliberately sang the school song with the tune of the funeral march, in order to arouse the interest of the twins. Sha Ji believes that these two people have outstanding talents and brains, and they are the DA members he plans to develop. To develop them, you must first make friends with them. It is still very simple to make friends with them, such as now. Sha Ji quietly pulled the twins over, looking curious about the baby. I heard that you are the people who know the castle best in Hogwarts, and even Mr. Filch, the administrator, can't compare to you. Is this true? George and Fred looked at each other excitedly and said in unison. So we are all so famous among the freshmen. So, can I? George and Fred said in unison, you want to, come with us for a night tour. Sha Ji nodded and looked at Fred and George with a pleading expression. Sha Ji did this, on the one hand, to cater to the twins and increase their favorability. On the other hand, he knew that Gemini had the Marauder's map in his hand. They had gotten it in Filch's office when they were still in first grade. Sha Ji just wanted to take a look at the map. He was curious whether there would be an extra Tom next to Quirrell on the map. This is not mentioned in the original. According to inference, there should be one on the map. At that time, you can use this as evidence to report a wave. This is better than using your own divination as an excuse. Because it is more intuitive. The twins said in unison, of course. George laughed and said, we can't turn down a Gryffindor expedition. Fred also laughed and said, in fact, we can take you to explore a lot of interesting places. Great, in return, I'll give this to you. Sha Ji took out a toy that he made in advance and handed it to them. What's this? George took the taffy-like candy. This is the inflated taffy I made myself. Sha Ji said excitedly, as long as you eat it, your whole body will swell and then float directly into the sky. However, I haven't tried how long it will take to float down. Fred and George looked at each other and said excitedly, Sha Ji, you are a genius. In fact, we had a similar idea. But we've only worked out taffy that swells the tongue. Oh my god, bloated toffee. Why didn't we think of that? Oh, Sha Ji, we are falling in love with you. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.